We're going to continue using David Perel's essays to learn how to use Obsidian software and to take better notes. Today, we're going to be looking at these next five essays. The first one is Find Your Senius. The second one, Intellectual Phase Transitions. The third, The Soldier Boy Strategy. The fourth one, Write About Earned Secrets. And finally, Create a Story Box. I want to show you how to manipulate the view within Obsidian so you can more efficiently and effectively get information into your note-taking system. Behind me, you can see the five different essays that we will explore today. How did I make this crazy view? I'll show you today. Let's get started. First things first, let's go ahead and get David's essays into our system. Down below, you'll find the links to the next five essays. Go ahead and take a moment to cut and paste these into our note-taking system just as we've done before. When you're done, unpause the video and I'll show you how we can get crazy with our Obsidian views. Welcome back. Your Obsidian view probably looks something like mine. Over on the side, you probably find all of your different notes. And remember, these are marked on files. If you have any directories, these will be listed over there too. In the center pane, you'll find the last essay that you worked on. And then finally, just up above me, you'll find either the tag view or the backlink view. David's first essay is Find Your Seniors. If we want all five of our essays side by side, the first thing we want to do is find our second essay. The next essay is Intellectual Phase Transitions. So what we do is we navigate over here on the left-hand side, and we can find our essay entitled Intellectual Phase Transitions. Here it is. And before we click on it, what we want to do is hold down the command or control key, and this will then open up the essay immediately in the window next to it. You can see now we've got two essays, the first original one on the left and the most recently opened one on the right. If we repeat this now for the next three essays, we'll see five essays side by side. We've got all five essays side by side now, but is feeling a little bit cramped. Let's go ahead and hide two of the windows on either side. We know that we don't need our menu of different files that we want to explore or our different notes that we want to explore. So let's click on the upper left-hand side and close that. We also don't need open our window that shows us the tags or the backlinks. That's over here. Let's collapse that down. So now we have a little bit of space. It feels like we can read these. This is the first view that I wanted to show you. In some cases, it might be useful to have multiple notes open side by side. Now, we can get crazy with our note layout view. Let's go ahead and look and see what we can do. If we take any of our notes and we hover over this little page looking view, a message pops up to us. It says drag to rearrange. If we drag that, we can change the order and we can just switch the order. But what we can also see is there are different options for where we can put these. For example, if I want this note right about earned secrets above the next one, what I can do is I can drag it above this spot. And if you look closely at my screen, you can see we have four essays across the top. And in the second column, we now have two essays, one above and below the other. We could do the same thing with the next one. And you could see maybe this is our major essay that we want to really work on. And these are like some reference essays. We can again, get crazy with how we want our arranged view. But the important point to take home here is that depending on the type of project you're working on and depending on how you want to lay out your notes, you can go ahead and change your view in order to fulfill whatever needs you have. It makes me think of an essay that we talked about in our last video, the Islands and Bridges Strategy. In that essay, David mentions how he uses post-it notes in order to lay out some of his ideas. The post-it note is his atomic thought, a single idea that he might want to explore. He refers to these atomic thoughts on a single post-it note as an island. He then arranges his islands. Again, these are post-it notes, so he does this in physical space. He then arranges these into different orders so that he can determine the best layout and flow for a given essay. This is going to be particularly useful for these long form essays or larger projects that have a lot of structure. You can then use this idea where you have a single island and then David describes the process of writing bridges in between these islands. These bridges then are going to be the connections between the first idea connected to the second idea connected to the third idea. You can do something similar in Obsidian where you can lay out your different ideas. If we have five key ideas that we are going to try to incorporate into some writing project, what we might do then is drag and arrange these ideas in our digital space, just as David does in his physical space, 
to determine the best layout for how we might want to structure our idea. So this multiplexed view of our different notes can be infinitely arranged in order to help us come up with our best next idea. I'm going to take a moment now to read these essays and find the ideas within them that link to some of our other ideas within our growing knowledge graph. Go ahead and take a moment and do that now. The second thing I want to show you is something called pinning a note. Let's open up one of David's essays. For example, let's open up the Soldier Boy strategy. In this essay, David introduces us to a rapper called Soldier Boy. He describes his discovery of Soldier Boy's music, who posted his curated music on a website called SoundClick, where he had one of the top 10 biggest audiences. David goes on to tell us about how Soldier Boy used to curate music David then tells us about the Soldier Boy strategy, where he slipped one of his own tracks into his curated music, and it was wildly successful. David then tells us how curation can help some people overcome some of the early pressure to be creative. So let's say we wanted to work on this note a little bit. What we can do is we can open up this note, as I did here, and then come up to this three dot, this ellipse in the upper right hand corner. Click on it one time, and you'll see a new menu drop down. Some of the options that you'll see in this menu are options that we could have used in order to lay out our multiplexed pane view. You can see that we can split vertically or split horizontally. I'll just show you how we can do that. This is going to then open up the exact same essay twice. We'll close that again. But the thing I want to do is show you about this pin. The pin means that if we click on any other links within our essay and open up any other notes, it will automatically keep this note pinned open and open the other note in the pane next to it. So for example, if I go to preview mode, we can see that I add some notes here. Um, here, the first one is curation. So if I click on this, it will open up this idea about curation. I say curation is collecting with intention, collecting with taste, and collecting with your unique voice. So you can see I didn't do anything. I didn't shift click. I didn't control click. I didn't add anything. I just simply clicked and it opened it up. If I open up another one, let's say I want to go, I'll go to preview mode again, and let's say I want to open up unique voice, I can click on voice and this is going to open up here. If I click on, let's say, aggregation, I made another note about aggregation. Here I defined aggregation as collecting, but in this case, without taste, without intention, or without your unique voice. So again, I'm just simply clicking on any of these, and because my essay is pinned open, all of these are going to open up in the pane next to it. Now, if I want, I can open up curation and aggregation um, in two panes next to it. So this is what I just did here. And you can see, I can still hold down that command key or the control key and click to open up another pane. But what happens is that I will always keep this pinned one open. So if we want to unpin, it's quite simple. We can just click on the pin and that will unpin it. We can then close it. So this can be helpful if you're working on, let's say, a single note and you want to add a lot to it, but you want to explore some other notes. The best way to do that is going to be to pin it. So there's one last thing that I want to show you. If you open up that essay again, the Soldier Boy essay, and we'll go ahead and close aggregation and curation. I showed you in the last video how you can open up graph view. Normally, when we open up graph view, all of our notes go away and we can explore our graph to navigate to a different note. However, when we have a note that is pinned open and I click on graph view now, again, my pinned note will stay open and my graph will open up next to it. This can become very powerful because in the last video, I also showed you how you can navigate the graph view to encourage serendipity and discovery and a little bit of randomness in your process. So what we can then do is let's say we are working on our own note, or our own essay, and we want to explore some ideas around it. We can have both the editable note and the graph view open next to it, where we can then explore back and forth. So for example, if we want to then click on voice, we can open up voice right here. We can click back and our graph view will open up again. And again, it's this powerful, flexible layout view that will allow us to open up a note, open up the graph view, and work on these side by side 
to really encourage serendipity and discovery in your note-taking system. The ability to lay out notes and graphs in different views was the main thing I wanted to show you today. I find myself more and more often wanting to lay out my notes in different ways. When I'm working on one, I want to be able to explore some different ideas in order to find those connections between the ideas. If you like this video, let us know. If you want to see more, we have a few more videos in this series where we're exploring note-taking systems and personal knowledge management in order to become more efficient and more impactful with our ideas. We'll see you next time.